Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'd much rather we were meeting in person two weeks before our awards show. Excitement building, exchanging ideas, sharing stories, laughing and remembering, launching future collaborations. That will happen again, and I look forward to that day. One nice thing about this format, though, is that many more of you can join us. Thank you again for taking the time to come together like this. As members of the Recording Academy, it's easy to mark time by the Grammys. The rhythms of our industry beat to it. There's a year long calendar associated with the awards shows and our activities tend to unfold like seasons. Committees, memberships, nominations. Artists often time their releases to that calendar. Our partners launch big campaigns around it. The show itself is almost like your birthday. When it arrives, you know another year has passed and it can trigger a wave of nostalgia and reflection and ignite a new determination. And here we are preparing for the Grammys, the cycle having run its course again for the 63rd time. When I look back on the year that has passed, despite the incredible challenges 2020 threw at us and the hardships that hit our industry, I'm here to tell you today that the overwhelming emotion I feel is gratitude. I'm grateful for you, our members. We've accomplished so much this year probably more than in any other 12 month period in the history of this organization. And we did it in the face of obstacles never seen before. Some lost their incomes, had their craft taken away from them and were unable to perform in front of people, but we kept grinding. Unable to give ourselves over to music, we pivoted and found ways to give back to our profession, to the music community, to our fellow members of this organization and to those we don't yet know our future members. They will inherit a better recording academy because of the work we've done together. It was almost exactly a year ago when the world was waking up to the reality of COVID. In the face of this devastating blow to the industry, the academy, we acted. In partnership with Music Cares, we distributed over $22 million in COVID relief, helping music people in their time of need we helped Catherine, a 26-year-old merchandise manager from Seattle, pay her rent for several months after the tour she was on was abruptly canceled and she found herself without any source of income. And for the first time in 50 years, Nicholas, a 73-year-old singer and songwriter from Detroit, found himself in a desperate financial situation. Our grant assistance kept him from pawning a treasured guitar for food. He wrote that due to music cares, his soul wears a smile as wide as the Pacific Ocean. And David, a 56 year old touring horn player from New Orleans, found himself without heat during the winter months. Music cares grant paid his past due bill and covered a future month to allow him time to secure a survival job. He noted that the grant was such a blessing, but deeper than that was a reassurance that his work as a musician was recognized, valued and appreciated. This is why our members are more than just members. They're humanitarians and they look after one another in their time of need. Meanwhile, we were busy in Washington. We knew that in the rush to enact legislation to help people get through the pandemic financially, there was a danger that Congress might forget about us music creators, especially gig workers who don't usually qualify for unemployment insurance and many generally lacked the protections that most employees get. A very large population of people in the music industry, recording artists, songwriters, and others are self-employed, working from gig to gig. When the work suddenly dried up, many had very little in the way of a safety net. We've had downturns before, but nothing even close to this. It was truly unprecedented to see the devastation to our music community. Our 12 chapters activated their members, and along with the Academy's representatives in DC, helped ensure that music wasn't forgotten in legislation like the CARES Act and the HITS Act that became part of important COVID relief bills. We formed alliances with other music organizations such as National Independent Venue Association, which played an important role in the Save Our Stages initiative by including independent venues and concert promoters in that legislation. When the COVID pandemic hit the US in full force last March, the Academy was already addressing a challenge of a different sort, one that had begun confronting in 2018. 
and that is to transform the Academy to better serve our members and the music community. Indeed, it was this challenge that motivated me to run for chair of the board in the first place. And again, in these last 12 months, we have brought an enormous amount of change forward. In April, we brought on Valicia Butterfield Jones as our chief diversity, equity, and inclusion officer. In July, the Academy entered into an action-oriented partnership with Color of Change, the nation's largest online racial justice organization. And in December, our partnership released the Change Music Roadmap, a guide to move the music industry beyond conversation and intention towards actionable racial justice. Initially announced in October 2020 at the industry-wide Change Music Summit, this is our latest initiative to promote much needed change within the music industry. The roadmap is a guide to correcting the undervaluation of the contributions of black music people to the world. This program was developed with the goal of holding ourselves and others in our industry accountable. Hosting the Change Music Summit was an important moment for the Academy. We brought together leaders, executives, experts for panels on shifting culture, amplifying diverse voices, putting leadership in action and driving systematic change throughout the entire music community. People who are true music trailblazers and leaders in our industry discussed best practices and strategies to encourage systemic change and elevate women, black and Latinx music people and underrepresented music creators and professionals. Race is not the only issue we were confronting. Gender, age, and ethnic diversity are also areas we need to continue to focus on. And we have undertaken a major outreach effort to develop new members who are younger, many from diverse backgrounds. On one positive result of this outreach initiative was our 2020 new membership class, the most diverse ever with over 48% female, 37% black indigenous people of color and 51% under the age of 40. Still so much needs to be done, including enlisting those new young members to serve on committees and become active in our organization. Next, we've modernized genres and categories to reflect trends in music and make sure everyone is properly recognized. We've tightened rules against potential conflicts of interest. We've made the awards process itself and the rules governing it much more transparent and accessible to everyone. It's been a productive 12 months. There have been a lot of changes. And now you know why I'm so grateful today. It's been a tough year, but it's also been uplifting. I wanna express my heartfelt gratitude to the people who rolled up their sleeves and put in the long hours required to enact this change. I know that sometimes this has been very comfortable and there are times when we've had to challenge what we've historically always done at the Academy, but we've moved with careful consideration and thoughtfulness and with a new sense of urgency and we've accomplished great things together. There have been many people in the trenches, our elected board of trustees who give so much of themselves to this institution and the staff of the Recording Academy who I've been privileged to work with. Your dedication to this organization does not go unnoticed. Thank you. And all the other members of our music community who volunteer their time on these initiatives like the members of our diversity task force and the Black Music Collective Change is hard. No one hands it to you. And the people serving on our committees know it. And thank you to my fellow music creators who have joined the fight. I wanna thank you for one last thing, and that's your unbreakable spirit. And I'm not talking about COVID now or the economic situation. When you're trying to judge an award or anything that's subjective like art, it's always difficult. And there's always going to be one person who's happy and a lot of people are going to be upset. It's always been that way for 63 consecutive Grammy shows. Two weeks from today, the morning after our show, I'm pretty sure someone's going to be unhappy. I can bet that some, someone's fans are going to be uh, emailing me or tweeting me or asking me why I didn't give the darn Grammy to their artist. Unfortunately, I can guarantee this is going to happen. But what I love about our Recording Academy and our staff is that we don't stop doing the work. We don't stop working to improve. We don't stop working to serve our music community. We don't stop working to diversify our membership. We don't stop working to do better. Now, don't get me wrong. I know we're not perfect. That's why we get up every day thinking about how we can push the Academy forward. 
continuously evolving every day. As many of you know, I ran for this chair of the board position on a platform of change and improvement. And now in my current role, I'm honored to be taking this journey with all of you, a journey of transformation, a journey to evolve our organization, to keep pace with the ever-changing nature of music and technology. To be effective, we've also had to listen. And we're listening now more than ever before because we want input from our members, from our industry and from our community. Some of what we've heard has not been productive. Sadly, we've seen in our country how false claims can be damaging and the damage is no less severe to the academy or to the music community when misinformation and careless allegations are made about the Grammys. It's unfair to the people who have worked all their lives to be nominated for a Grammy. It's also unfair to the people who work hard to make our process what it is. Simply put, the Grammy Awards matter. It's why they elicit so much passion. My sincere hope though is for the industry that I came up in and the academy that I care about is that we can have constructive dialogue with real collaboration like the music creators we are on the changes we need to make as an academy and as an industry. Again, we're not done with our transformation. In many ways, we are just beginning. I'm asking you to hold us accountable to the promises we've made to do better but I'm also asking you to join us, partner with us as we continue to evolve our academy into something that we can all be proud of. This is not a vision for tomorrow. It's our job for today. I sincerely thank you again for everything you did this year, for all the ways we made our organization stronger, better, and more just. Now it's time to look forward to this year's Grammys. It's gonna be a great show this year. And I hope you'll all be watching on March 14th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on CBS. I appreciate you all spending some time with me today and I look forward to taking your questions. Okay, Harvey, it looks like we have some uh, member questions coming in. Um, the first one, um, in fact, a few members have asked about this, about weathering the pandemic uh, with the music industry and how the Recording Academy plans to assist musicians during the pandemic since revenues from touring have been severely dis diminished. Good question. Thank you very much, Andy, and thank you for our members for the question. I would say that it's you know, obvious, I don't need to tell any of you that our, uh, it's been a tough year and our income has been way down across the board, no touring, uh, not a lot of collaboration, not appearing. So we've been, we've been struggling as an industry. Uh, the Academy has uh, fortunately go, gone above and beyond uh, with our work through Music Cares, giving money back to members who need assistance and providing a safety net for people who need help. And then we're also really concentrated on advocacy in DC to make sure what uh, the legislators are passing is going to include us, includes, mu include music people in stimulus packages and relief packages. We've been involved in the HITS Act, the CARES Act, and others that are, are being put together. So we're very active through Music Cares and making sure that money is flowing back into the music community. We've raised and given away uh, over $22 million so far. And then again, the advocacy, making sure that we're working on behalf of the members in DC to make sure we are protected and accounted for in upcoming legislation. Perfect, thank you, Harvey. We're gonna pause for just one second here. We have one little thing to fix with our camera. Thanks for your patience, everyone. It's always something.
Okay, we'll get started uh, back up here again. Um, Harvey, a voting member from New York asks, what are your current diversity and inclusion initiatives that you're working on? All right, thank you, New York. We've been doing a lot of work around diversity and inclusion. First off, hiring a diversity, equity, inclusion officer, Alicia Butterfield-Jones, who has been amazing for us at the Academy. Uh, together with her, we've been working on some incredible programs. First of all, we started what's called the Black Music Collective. Uh, we've started a partnership with the Color of Change, the largest online racial justice organization in the world. Uh, we've gone on a listening tour to make sure that we're really hearing from all the different diverse groups that are potential stakeholders for the Academy. We've gone internally with the staff and done listening sessions there as well. And we're continuing to affect how we attract new members as uh, voting members and professional members. And we're going into different music communities, into different genre communities, in uh, different gender and race communities to making sure that we are balanced and representative and reflective uh, with not only our staff, but with our voting, uh, with our committees, and with everything we're doing. It was a big priority for me as I came in uh, I felt the need to uh, look at everything we were doing from a, a diversity standpoint, along with the other things that I was looking into. Diversity and equity and inclusion was a big priority for me, and we set that tone in the culture very quickly, uh, almost a year ago. And as I said, bringing in Belisha has helped tremendously. So a lot of work being done there, a lot more work to still be done, uh, but very proud of the strides we've made so far. Great. Um, next question. A member is asking, what efforts is the Academy making to be more transparent with the media, artists, and with the public? More transparent. That's, that's the, the word, right? Uh, we've been talking a lot about transparency, and we've taken some steps to make sure that we are being more transparent. I think um, one of the big steps was publishing our rule book. It's online now. You can look at every aspect of our process, our voting, other things on our rule book. Uh, the other step is doing things like this, just making sure I'm available, making sure others on the staff are available, other elected leaders are available to have conversations, to talk, to answer questions, to give opinions. Uh, and I think most of you that know me will find that if you ask me a direct question, I'll give you a direct answer. Uh, there aren't too many things that you know I'm not comfortable talking about. I think this is a time where sharing and, and uh, being able to talk about facts and information is, is helpful. I don't think there's any more room or space left for hiding things or disguising things. I think being authentic and being honest uh, is the order of the day for sure. Uh, and I, I've tried to bring that to the Academy and I've sensed that we've actually been doing really good at that and we've been sharing information openly and honestly. You know, there are still things um, that we can't talk about legal things or advisors on our legal team will tell us this is not something that we're able to share at this point. But short of that, I feel very comfortable about um, the amount of sharing that we've been doing, the transparency that we've brought to the Academy lately. Speaking of that, another member would like um, to ask a question about our awards process specifically and wants to understand why an artist album was submitted in one category but moved to another. Who is making these decisions and why? Thank you, good question. Uh, the idea of making sure music is in the right category is something the Academy has placed great importance on. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that, maybe more, uh, more in-depth response than this call or this Zoom will, will account for, but you know, we want the right songs, the right music to be in the right category, so we have screening committees. Most of you know this, some of you may or may not. The screening committees are made up of journalists, experts in the genre, uh, producers, songwriters, engineers, uh, musicologists, and these people are analyzing every beat of the music, every part of this production, every style of songwriting, and they're making sure that those pieces of music fit specifically into the categories that they're entered in. If they're not, then we try and use our best judgment. The screening committees evaluates it and tries to use their best judgment to see where does that piece of music fit better. And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, and it happens across many different genres, those experts will decide that for one reason or another, the music does not fit in the category that it was submitted in. And they'll make a tweak and they'll put it to a different category. And the thing is that in changing the category, not only does this, the screening committee from one genre have to say, this doesn't sound like this genre and move it to that genre, but the accepting genre screening committee also has to accept 
the song or the piece of music. So there's two committees that are deciding that this doesn't fit here, fits better there, and then it gets switched. So that's a good question and it's a process that, um, as I said, there's many reasons for the process, but it's been uh, very helpful for us making sure that the right songs are in the right categories. Thanks, Harvey. Um, we have another question coming out of the New York chapter, active today. New York's New York. getting all the questions today. Yeah. Um, as a social justice advocate, a black woman, and a creator, I was wondering if there was an update on the Black Music Collective. You made it sound like I'm a black woman. <laughs> the question is from a okay. an activist, a social justice advocate, a black woman, and a creator. Okay. Thank you. And I was, okay. she was wondering if there was an update on the Black Music Collective and what the goals are of the BMC to amplify back black creators within the academy. How can someone get involved? Three questions. Uh, the goals of the BMC actually are to amplify the voices of black music creators, not just in the academy, but the industry. So that hopefully answers one question. The update on the BMC is uh, we've got it up and running. We named honorary co-chairs, uh, people like Jimmy Jam, Quincy Jones, Sylvia Roan, Deborah Lee, Jeff Harleston, John Legend. These are the people that helped advise us as to the structure of the BMC and what the BMC should include. And we also, with the help of that group, and also BMC leaders, Jerry L. Johnson and uh, Riggs Morales, have come together with Felicia Butterfield-Jones to build a leadership council. The leadership council is made up of people across the country uh, that are leaders in black music. And they're executives, they're creators, they're um, producers, they're artists. And there are approximately maybe over 30 leadership council members of the BMC in conjunction with the honorary co-chairs. From there, we've got, taken it across the chapter level and we've put BMC members in each chapter. So 12 chapters now have a BMC local group of BMC representatives, five to eight people in each chapter. So there you have the three tiers, honorary co-chairs, the leadership council, and the local chapter of the BMC. Those people are all coming together to have meetings, virtual meetings, of course, where we talk about um, everything. We talk about membership. How can we increase representation from black music cre creators and membership? We talk about music cares. How can the black music community better benefit from some of the work, the amazing work that, that music cares is doing? We talk about advocacy. How does advocacy affect black music and what can the BMC do to help advocacy efforts? We talk about education in the museum. Where are underserved communities around black communities that need um, more educational efforts and more outreach? So the BMC is up and running. We've had probably four or five meetings. It's been very productive. Uh, again, the mission is to raise awareness and acknowledgement and uh, acceptance and making sure that black music is is reflected in everything the academy is doing but also across the industry so those are uh that's what's happening it's an update and that's some of the goals great thanks uh, we actually have a member in the texas chapter now asking uh texas. Wh what the academy's advocacy plans are for um, higher and more transparent revenue from streaming services, especially for independent creators. I think we have a couple of questions in this vein. Right, so you're seeing more and more independent creators um, in our industry, and I think that trend's gonna continue. You're also seeing a bigger piece of revenue being generated from the streamers every year. I think overall recorded music revenue is at 83% from the streaming companies, $12 billion. So as far as transparency and getting that money from the streamers and making sure it's accurate, something that we're absolutely working on. We have an amazing team in DC um, and we're fighting, we're arguing, we're jumping up and down, making sure we're heard from and making sure we're being looked after because monetizing our art is a priority for us at the Academy and making sure we're able to make a sustainable living and a fair wage for what we create. You know, a lot of times, I'm, I'm a songwriter, I'm a producer, I work on these darn songs. I've, I've practiced, I've built, I've perfected my craft over the last 15, 20 years and then it takes weeks, months, sometimes a year to make the perfect song just the way you want it and then to have it come out. 
and then not get paid for it is not fair and it's not acceptable. It's not okay for anyone at the academy and our advocacy team is making sure that that doesn't continue. We hope that it doesn't continue, but it's also something that as members, we all have to come together to fight for and make sure we, we don't allow it to continue. Um, trying to dilute the value of, of music or art or intellectual property of any kind is something that um, I feel very strongly about. I think as creators, we're all very unique and uniquely talented and there has to be a high value placed on that. So our hope is that we can continue to push for stronger uh, legislation and we can negotiate better rates from the streamers. I also don't wanna get confused in saying anything uh, negative about the streaming companies as far as how our, we feel about them because they are our partners at this point. They are the people that have allowed us to put out more music than we ever have before. They're the companies that get music out to our consumers and our fans faster than ever before. They allow for so much discovery and so much opportunity, especially for independent artists. So we have to balance that and make sure that we're negotiating fairly. Uh, of course, we want to be strong for our members and for our creators, but we also have to realize that these are now our partners. And our hope is that we can come to an equitable solution that benefits them and allows them to run their business, but also puts money where it belongs in the, in the hands of, of creators, people making the art. Got it. Thank you. One attendee is asking, what is the status of the current CEO search going on at the Recording Academy? The current search is ongoing. We hired a search firm. We formed a search committee. The search committee includes uh, trustees, the executive committee, and other trustees. It also includes a staff advisory committee, which is different members from, from the staff. And they formed a job description. That job description went out into the marketplace. The marketplace has received the job description. We've been speaking to, I think the search firm said over a hundred candidates or potential candidates, and then they've narrowed it down to a few and then done some interviews. So it's ongoing. It will continue to go on for the next two to three months. And then our goal is to have a new CEO in place uh, sometime around May, hopefully. Thanks. We have another member asking, um, what have you done to di diversify the membership? You kind of touched on this a little bit already. Um, this person heard about the outreach to underrepresented communities via listening sessions and more, mm -hmm. and knows about the goal for female membership, but they want to hear a little bit more from you. Membership is a huge priority right now for us. And I think, you know, I talked about it a little bit earlier, but the awards show, the advocacy efforts, the outreach and the, philanthropic things that the Academy does all stems from membership. Membership is where we get our elected leaders. Um, so for us, membership is of paramount importance and getting that balance right between gender equity and uh, race equity and uh, genre equity. Those things are very important. So what we've done is something that's really never been done to my knowledge around the Academy is a couple of things. First of all, we're really doing strong outreach within different genres and we're going into those communities and we're meeting with leaders in the different genres and saying, who do we need to reach out to? How can we convince people in your genre, in your community, that they need to become members of the Academy? And the Academy has suffered in the past in specific genres um, because they don't feel like they were equally represented or they were reflected properly, whether that's in the awards or on the television show. And so we're going into those areas and saying, we need your help, we need your partnership, we need you to be a part of the Academy. Otherwise, we're not going to get the rep representation or recognition that your genre is looking for. So going into those communities and making sure that we're listening, paying attention to what they're asking for, paying attention to what their grievances have been in the past, trying to correct those things and, and try and invite new people to the table to join and to be a part of the process is the first step. The other step is we are starting a requalification process. So if you made a lot of music in the you know 25 years ago you may not be the most uh, aware or most um, reflective voter for us at this point so you are going to be requalifying you're gonna make sure you have updated credits make sure you're still continuing as a professional or a, a voting member and you're still creating music so that you can continue to vote so a combination of bringing in new members and more uh, representative members uh, and then slowly requalifying people that have been voting for quite some time, I think will start to change the makeup of our, our membership and it will um, affect the way 
we do everything, the way we vote, the way we elect new leaders, the way we give awards, what shows up on the TV show. So a lot of outreach, a lot of listening, a lot of listen, uh, um, recruiting and inviting and explaining, making sure that these people are coming to the table to work with us. Great. A uh, question just came in. With the launch of the Black Music Collective last year, do you have plans to do a similar campaign or make an, a similar group for Latin music and music creators? To be determined, I think at this point we are just literally getting the BMC up and running. I could see us doing other other uh, collectives as well, if need be. Again, it starts from the outreach and really listening and seeing what the different communities need. And as we start hearing that they need uh, different services or different support, then that will really determine what we do next in the different communities. But uh, they're all the different genres, different groups, different communities, constituencies are important. Um, it's really going to take some time for us to evaluate what the needs are of each and then we'll move forward from there. Great. Um, here's another question. I think you'll like this one. Um, how are you making the Recording Academy more accessible to rising artists and how can current members help? Well, I like to think we are very accessible to rising members. I think the outreach that we've done, the inviting of new members is something that generally if in the past you weren't for like far into your career, you may not know about the Academy or you might not have the time or energy to join. So we're going and kind of reversing that where we're going out and seeking out the new members and seeking out people that are just becoming uh, professionals or, or voting potential members. So I think that outreach is, is going to help. I think making sure that uh, up and coming artists feel like this is a place for them, make sure they're seeing themselves reflected in our organization and in our practices and policies. I think making sure that uh, Everything we do is up to date and relevant and is evolving and is uh, changing, it's similar to music, right? Everybody that's making music, if you're watching this, you're a creator or you're involved in the industry. So you know music changes quickly. Technology changes quickly. The academy has to change as quickly. We have to keep up. We have to set the standard for being able to pivot, being able to move, being able to adjust, being able to accommodate. And that goes a long ways to new members making sure they know what the Academy is about and making them feel comfortable and understand why it's important that they join us and why it's important that they be a part of the Academy. And it's not just about the awards. Don't get me wrong, the awards are super important. It's, it's what drives our organization. But the 365 days of the year and the work that we do in all of our other programs is what I think we need to spread the message about. And I think that will attract uh, and be a, a driver for younger and incoming artists or musicians or creators to want to be involved in the academy yes it's great to be able to vote and to be able to vote for yourself that's why i joined so i could vote for myself um, but it, it's also great when you learn about the incredible work that's being done by the academy what it's giving back to our community and how it's building it up and lifting up our industry that's the stuff that i think is exciting um, and i think that's the, the, the things that will get more people interested and invested in the academy Great. Um, back on the DEI front, um, a member would like to know if you're happy personally with the progress the Academy has made from the diversity and inclusion front. And do you think that the Academy should be doing more? I'm very happy with what we've done on the DEI front. I do think we should be doing more. Uh, some of the people on this call know me personally, so they know my personality and they know I'm, I'm not the type to be content and excited and be like, oh, we did it, we're so great. I'm always a pusher, I'm always gonna want more, I'm always gonna drive for more improvement, more change. So yes, I'm proud, yes, I'm thankful, yes, I'm appreciative of all the incredible work that the people have done to help get us to where we are, but I also see we have more, um, more work to do, more improvement to make. Uh, I think there are things that we're working on that are right around the corner that are very exciting that I'll be excited to share with, with all of you. Uh, if I can talk about some of those at some point, then I'll feel a little bit better, but I'll still keep pushing and I'll still keep wanting more. And I know our team at the Academy is going to continue to want to get better and continue to want to involve, evolve. I think our leadership is um, really excited about where we are, elected leadership and on the staff side. Everybody's pushing for transformation. Everyone's driving towards improvement. And I think uh, as you start to see more programs roll out over the next six months you'll also be impressed and proud with where we've 
headed and where we're going and where we're ending up. But it is a constant journey. It's never, never a, a completed task here. I think we accomplish some things and then we say, okay, what's next? How can we do better? You know, we have to be leaders at the academy. I consider ourselves to be leaders. Maybe that's overly optimistic or I'm building us up to be more than we are. But I think because we are neutral, we're not just a label or we're not just a publishing company or we're not just representing artists or songwriters. We kind of encompass all the different crafts and professions in the industry. We have an opportunity to really lead by example. And that's something that I've taken very seriously and I think all of us at the Academy have taken seriously to make sure that we are setting the example um, for the way you're supposed to do things. And that's my hope. Great. Um, Harvey, we have a, a few of these questions come in about the Black Music Collective Grammy Week event that's happening. Can you talk a little bit more about what that's going to be and what that looks like? It's going to be incredible, actually. That's what it's going to be. I think uh, it is the first ever Black Music Grammy Week event. So for us at the Academy, we're very excited about that. Um, there are incredible performances, great conversation, fireside chats. Uh, we're having what are called mogul moments where industry leaders and influential people in our community are going to be speaking about what it takes to be where they are, what it takes to get um, the Black Music Collective up and running, what black music has meant to our industry, things like that. And then there's going to be some special guests that we haven't announced yet that we're very excited about. But we've worked really hard to make this first ever event special. I know it's virtual still. I wish we were doing it in person. We could all really celebrate. But for us, this is really exciting. It's an opportunity to share a little bit about what we've been working on and why we're excited at the Academy. And then also time just to come together and, and really conversate and uh, share some, some time around black music and people that are involved in it. Great. And how can, how can people get involved with the BMC? Well, as I talked about earlier, there are 12 chapters around the country for the Academy. And within those chapters, we are nominating and naming uh, BMC representatives. So I would follow up with your local chapters and make sure that they know you want to be involved and then attend the the event Grammy week. I think, as I said, it's going to be exciting. There's going to be great conversation, great entertainment and just coming together around black music. So I think uh, being involved in that would be a great first step. And then, uh, you know, you can always reach out to me. I'm always available and free. You can also reach out to Jerry L or Riggs or Valicia. Uh, the people that are heading up the BMC and let them know that you're passionate about it and this is something that you want to be involved in. And we are a very collaborative group. We love, you know, more people excited about it, the better. For us, it's about sharing and building. And, you know, we're trying to do something special here. So uh, we appreciate the help from anyone from any part of the country, any age, any genre, uh, helping us build the BMC, but also helping us build the Academy into what we believe it can be is something that we welcome. Great. We only have time for one more question, but we do know that we did not get to all of the questions that came through. Please know that we will try to reach out individually and, and, and make Absolutely. sure we get answers for everybody. Um, for uh, this broadcast, though, we're going to end on a question. Um, Harvey, where do you want the Recording Academy to be a year from now? What are you most excited about? Tell us more. I'm excited in general about the transformation at the Academy and the changes that we've made and that we are making. I think some of the goals that we need to pay attention to, I, I don't want to talk about what we've done already because I think um, we've accomplished that and there's, there's more to come. But what I would share at this point is the thing I'm excited about going forward are making sure that we're diversifying our income, making sure we're looking at other places to generate money. Uh, I, I know we have an incredible deal at CBS that allows us to do so many great programs and do the great work that we do, but I also want to make sure that we're maximizing potential and taking advantage of our position in the industry and around the globe, actually, uh, with our brand so that we can continue to help our music industry and our music community. So uh, globalization of the brand, working on uh, other opportunities for TV, and digital or streaming and going forward. Uh, I want to make sure our membership is even more diverse and inclusive than it is now. I want to make sure that the outcomes are more equitable than they ever have been. And I want to make sure the Academy is trusted and respected more than it's ever been. You know, there have been times where we've been accused of, of things or we've had people bring things up as far as nominations or uh, they're upset about one thing or another. So it's really important to me and I think everyone at the Academy that we continue to communicate, 
have outreach to different people, uh, have conversations and talk about why the academy is important. And in a year from now, I hope our relationships continue to evolve and grow. I hope our partnerships can continue. Hope we can bring more people to the table, more artists, more producers, more executives, more uh, music people from all across the industry and bring them to the table so we can have even better decision making and even better leadership. Uh, and that's you know, hopefully a year, maybe in six months, maybe in two years, however long it takes, I think we can continue to evolve and transform the academy. Um, you know, music has always been out ahead of everything, I like to think. Music kind of sets the tone for things. Music uh, tells what's happening, but also tells where we want to go. It talks about where society, where culture is, but where we're headed. And so I, I like to think that we can do that same thing at the Academy. I think as music leads us, the Academy can be leaders as well. And I talked a little bit about it, but in a year, I hope that we are in a position to be able to make a huge difference for our members and for our industry and for our community, uh, but also be a respected uh, organization that is in service of its members and in service of the industry uh, and have those relationships and have the goodwill and have the longevity as an organization to continue to do the really important work that we do 365 days a year. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Harvey. Thank um, you, Andy. Good questions, everyone. Thank you very much. I'm sorry we didn't get to all of them. Maybe we'll do this again or otherwise feel free to email me and uh, I'll get back to you right away. But thank you all very much.